Hey guys, it's Morgan from My Glorious Leaves, and today I'm going to do a little bit more of a relaxing video of some plant chores. Um, I'm going to be dealing with some things like this leaf here, um, my Magnificum Verde. Um, that was acclimating, and some of my, like, these mounted plants need to be watered, um, some other plants need to be watered. I need to fill my humidifiers, fill up my watering cans. Um, I think I need to pot up some propagations as well and take a look at everything that's in the grow tent. Um, so if that sounds like something you guys are into, then stay tuned and also give a like and subscribe. And let's get into it. Alrighty, so I made myself some breakfast and I cleaned my room. I had to put some laundry away and things like that to get everything cleaned up so we can do some planty things. Um, and then I'm also watching one of my planty friends, the planted Carly Flower right there. Um, she's in the background there while I was doing my cleaning and now I'm gonna get into some plant chores. All right, so the first thing I wanna take care of today is this Anthurium Magnificum Verde. Um, I got this in a trait actually from Lulu's Leaves. Um, and it's in sagna moss here. And this was not her fault whatsoever. Um, she lives about an hour from me-ish, give or take. Um, and during the ride, I guess it must have suffered some stress or just, you know, being in a new environment. And Ethereum are pretty tricky that way. But I kind of thought that, you know, it's wasting energy trying to support itself and it's starting to crisp up at this point. So I think it's best to just chop it off. I actually did run into her yesterday at my work and we were talking for a little bit and yeah we agreed that it's the best to chop it up and I'm going to put it in my grow tent. Um, normally you can see I don't know if it's called a caterpillar on an anthurium but this is where the caterpillar would be on a philodendron where the leaf the new leaf would form but there's actually nothing in there it's an empty an empty pocket so normally I wouldn't cut lower than this so that a new leaf could still form out here in this area where the sheath would come out. It does look like a good, it's got a good node there. It's got a good um, system going on. It has really good roots. If I take it out of here, like the roots, you can see them. I don't know if you can. The lighting's really bad, but it's got really good roots. So um, I think maybe I'll take it out in order to see where I'm gonna cut it. Alrighty, so I think I'm gonna pull it out. This way I can get a good idea of what's going on in the root system and everything, because I'm also pretty new to taking care of Anthurium, and I just wanna make sure the roots are okay, like while I can. And okay, so it does look like we have some root rot here, um, just slightly. Um, the node itself, ooh, it's really mushy. This part is fine, so I think I'm actually gonna cut this like right off. Okay, I'm gonna cut right before the little bulb. There's a slight bulge in the stem and I'm just gonna cut it there for now. And I'm probably gonna text Lulu and ask her what she thinks I should do. So I just cut this big, big, beautiful leaf off. Look how big it is. It was huge. I would honestly keep this leaf and press it if I had a place big enough. Maybe I could find like a frame or something because it is such a beautiful leaf. I kind of left it alone because I thought it was acclimating. So I just thought, well, okay. Um, but so there's some like brown bits here. It looks like the best thing to do is gonna be to take all this moss off, cut the roots and then repot it. So I have to cut it off. Oh no, I'm gonna have to like cut back all of these roots. That's all rotted. This might be a long video today. <laughs> I thought I was just gonna be cutting the leaf. That is a shame. I had to lose all this root um, and that's just because it's rooted like before. It's rooted, it's rotted halfway in the middle of the stem. So then you have to cut it off because it's just gonna spread more. So, so we still have a pretty, good root system. I'm just going to cut that off. Any roots that are like black and mushy, I'm actually going to be doing a root rot video pretty soon. Um, this should have been in the root rot video. I wanted to do root rot as a completely separate video, but I don't think I have any other plants that actually have root rot. So I will insert this footage in the root rot video maybe. This is what roots look when they're rotted. This part is fine. This is good, healthy root, the white part. The problem is this 
brown part up top, this is the part that was connected to the plant. And so this part is no good. So if that's rotted, only above it can be good. Nothing below can survive. So even though this part is good, the part that was connected to the plant was rotted. And so all of these are mushy. They're squishy. I don't know if you can see I squished them. Um, and then another way that you can tell is when you pull them, they get like stringy, tiny things in the middle of it. That means it's rotted. So you need to get rid of that. Questions. So as you can see, this is the rotted side and this side looks almost fine. I think I'm gonna make a cut right there um, so that there's a, a good clean node right there that also has axial buds that the plant can grow from. And then I'm also gonna try to save this node too, but just because it's rotted at the top, I don't know how well it's gonna do, and I don't want that rot to spread to this, but I'm going to try to cut it there. Oh, okay, so the inside is actually okay. So that's the inside, oh, if I can focus. That's the inside of the node. So that's not too, too bad. It just looks rotted on this one side. So I can try to cut that. So we got a pretty good looking node here. There's minimal um, rot. This is just like brown on the outside. I don't think that's actually rot or anything. So this is like the node we have left. And actually this, you can see it's hollow. I'm actually just gonna cut it right off. Okay, that's like the, where the new growth point would form and that's brown too. I'm gonna try to wash that off and save it. And then this is, I don't have as much hope for it, but it does have roots, which might end up being what saves it. So I got most of it cut off, what I can cut off. Um, and then I'm going to go wash these and get some clean moss and I will be right back. Go ahead and wash these nodes off as best we could. So this one has long roots and this one doesn't have any. Um, and then I got these ready with moss in them, they still have a lot of water, so I'm just leaving them soak while I do other plant chores. Um, the one with the roots is gonna go in the bigger container and the small one is gonna go in this. So the next thing that I did is I filled up my watering can. I filled up this little humidifier here, um, which used to be for just the Syngonium and the Magnificum Verde. And then I also filled up this little humidifier, which is actually just a little diffuser. And this one goes in my grow tent. And I keep such small ones in my grow tent because honestly, all it needs to do is run for like maybe 10 minutes and then the whole thing is completely full of steam. Got it going good. The steam is coming out there, the mist, sorry. So this is my Philodendron Goriosum. I'm trying to get it in a spot where it doesn't get too much light. So it's kind of turned that way. This got sent to me from BC a little while ago. You can see over there, there's a couple little growth points coming. So I just have the stolen resting on the moss, um, but it's a little dry. So I am going to give that a little drink around there in the area. And now I'm just gonna kind of feel, oops, some other plants. My, my, er, uh, my melanocrysum is a little dry as well. I usually pull these plants out, so I'm going to. It's just tough with one hand when I'm trying to film it. This is my other Gloriosum node. And that's. Drink. Um, and then I have my Alocasia Silver Dragon in the back. It's kind of moist, but uh, these guys like to be pretty wet, so I'm going to give him just a little extra. Um, it wasn't actually wet, by the way. It was just slightly, slightly moist. Um, and then these ones in the front, this is a variegated bro marks. Um, and I might have to check it. It looks like the moss is pretty dry. So I'm going to just kind of water it in there a little bit. The lazy way, of course. Um, this guy, the varicosum in here, um, the water's up to the top, so that's great. And this is the varicosum and it looks like these leaves might be rotting off. So I might 
Um, let's undo that actually. And I'm just gonna untie these little ties. I hope you can see what I'm doing here. I'm propping you up on some other plants. These are kind of rotted, the stems, which was to be expected, but the bottom parts look okay, so I am going to cut them off. Um, this is all going to be in the root rot video that I'm going to film. So as you can see, or if you can see, this stem looks brown here. There's no point of trying to save this leaf, and it actually is yellow quite far down, but wherever it's mushy, I'm going to cut it. So it's mushy there, there, and... Honestly, kind of pretty far down. I'm gonna cut it down here just to be safe. And there's no sign of anything where I cut it. So, oops, over here. And so that looks good to me. And this is the same thing. I don't wanna cut it where it's mushy at all. So I'm gonna cut it pretty far down. The nodes are still in water, so they're gonna be okay. Again, no need for the stick. And they're going to be sitting there with the node from the beginning. So this is all we have left of that beautiful varicosum, of course, aside from this one propagation. And now I am so very lucky and happy that I did take this um, cutting. I did it as a joke to begin with, but looks like it's gonna save my favorite plant. So I'm really excited about that. So this is my beautiful, um, Philodendron Splendid. It's a Milano Chrysum Varicosum Cross. Um, this was the oldest leaf when I got it and that's expected to be yellowed. So I'm okay with that. Um, I'm gonna chop it off. Man, you guys are gonna think I'm a horrible plant mom. All my plants are not doing very well, but um, it looks like we're making a new leaf in that um, caterpillar there. I don't looks like you can see a new leaf being made in that caterpillar. I'm not sure if you guys can, but that is super exciting. And this is the leaf put out in my care and my boyfriend bought me this plant. So I am beyond grateful for it. And so this was the newest leaf when I got the plant. So it actually survived. All right. And it needs a drink. So I'm going to give it a good drink as well. Um, I'm thinking of trying Liquidirt. Currently, I just put a little bit of Marfil fish emulsion in my in my water and a little splash of miracle Grow. Um, let me know if I should use Liquidirt. It seems pretty expensive. I know Plant Me Ashley has a code to get 25% off, but still in Canadian dollars, it ends up being $80. Um, and I know you can get it on Amazon for like 50, so might do that. And this is my Anthurium Hybrid and the leaf's doing okay. It looks a little yellower than it normally is, but there is like a little crispy tip. I'm just gonna cut that off. I don't like looking at crispy tips, and I know they're not perfect. Plants aren't perfect, but anyway. This is the leaf that kind of came in upside down, so that's pretty cool. It just kind of came in like that. So this is the plant here. Sorry, it's hard to film at the same time, but the soil seems pretty moist. It does say that it's wet, um, and that could be just from all the humidity in here and the water the last time, but it could also mean that maybe it's a good idea that we repot it. It does have a new growth point there, but maybe for the root rot video, we'll pull it out just to see what's going on. This one seems a little dry at the top, but I'm still going to probe it. Anthuriums, I'm very new to, so I want to make sure I'm doing it right. And it actually says wet as well. And it looks like the new growth point is like, it doesn't look like it's doing that well. So for my root rot video, I think I'm gonna pull these anthurium out, even though they look like they're okay. So I'm sure this video is pretty long by now. So this might just end up being watering because I was going to do a little repot, but I don't think that that's gonna happen at this point. Um, but anyway, these are some of the plants that I have propagating for my shop. Um, this one is not necessarily for the shop, but it is one of my new ones. It is a Philodendron Florida Ghost and it's variegated, which is really cool. And then here's a Hoya Meredithii here. Sorry, the light's really purple. Um, Philodendron by Penifolium. I really love the shape of this guy. Super cool, Monstera Penati Partita. Then we have a Philodendron Silver Sword in the back growing here in Lecca. Um, and then some Hoya Australis. Um, this is just a Philodendron um, Neon um, Heteracium. 
that I wanted to make fuller so I chopped it up it's just waiting here while the other little leaves propagate I have a Hoya lacinosa under here um, this was a Hoya acuta variegated but it um, leaf fell off and then this is another little bipenifolium here and another little leaf there so that's growing there and then this is it looks like a Ben Vergarii, but I'm not 100% sure and it's sun stressed on the edges and then I have a Hoya Hindu rope that I just put in here to see if I can make it grow faster because these guys are so darn slow and then propagating in here is a little Monstera Peru node I have some Epipremnum Panatum nodes here um, and then in here are some Hoyas, some Numularioides and things like that um, and the moss feels moist but I'm going to give it another spritz so I just have a nutrient solution that I keep all of my LECA plants in and I spray this on all my plants and then on my Hoyas I also go ahead and spray this orchid fertilizer Orchids and Hoyas both take in nutrients from their leaves. So it's a good idea to spray them um, and make your Hoyas grow faster. So I try to do that about once a week with my Hoyas, um, wherever they may be, um, and that just helps them grow a little bit more. So these plants in here, I'm just going to give them all a quick drink. I'm doing it the lazy way today because I don't want to take them all out. I've already made a mess earlier. Um, but sometimes you have to take them out. And sometimes I just do like a quick watering thing. So these ones, these Epipremnum Panatum variegated, um, I don't know where the water level is at with these, so I'm just going to lightly trickle some water in until the water level rises up. Ooh, it was very low, okay. So when you do propagate plants in perlite, you do want to make sure that the water level is pretty much at the top of the perlite. Um, that's at least what I do. So if that's wrong or different from what you guys do, let me know. Um, but this is what has worked for me so far. And the green is just, oopsies, the green is just some algae. So it's really normal actually, and it's not a bad thing. But I want to get like some sort of shelves for the bottom of these just so that they're not on this like wire because none of these can stand up and i'm tired of getting all of these trays they're kind of annoying and then i have oh, i may have to take them out I have this hoya australis that i'm just gonna give oopsies Verde is no longer here. I wanted to put my Philodendron Milano Chrysum on my desk as well. This mist seems to be coming forward, so I'm going to do it this way. So I have um, the Milano Chrysum and my Albo Syngonium here, which I'm also going to give a drink to. I'm going to um, put these nodes in the prop, in their little new prop containers. Um, which is what this all all of this stuff is for um, and then I'm gonna put them in the grow tent and we'll probably water my IKEA greenhouse cabinet and all the plants up here Alrighty, so I'm back with some better lighting and saran wrap um so what we're gonna do now is make the of prop boxes for these little guys as they recover so this one has an auxiliary bud yeah i kept saying axillary and now i'm just like in my mind trying to be like which one is it <laughs> kind of thing um so i just have to remember which way was up and so this one was the, where the leaf came from so it's gonna go up like that and this one obviously like that so i have them soaking in here and i put nutrient water i always soak my moss in nutrient water and oh excuse my falling over I do put a drop like a literal drop of super thrive I'm really bad at making sure it's a drop so if it's a little concentrated that's like honestly too much this stuff is so concentrated um, but it's really really good for your plants so I try to use it whenever I can I actually just got it I thought that it was 
um, a fertilizer and it's not. It's just a nutrient solution meant to be used alongside a fertilizer program. So you squeeze it out, squeeze it out really good. And then I'm just gonna kind of put in the bottom there. And I'm just gonna see where these roots are going to come out. Um, and I kind of want the node to be like there maybe, like kind of down there, because I want to put this lid on. So I don't want to crush these roots, which is why I'm putting them in pretty low. Um, and that's also why I like to use clear cups, because then I can keep an eye on the roots the entire time. And it's important to check your plants all the time, and that's what the root rot video is going to be on. As we get into kind of days where I feel like doing a lot of plant chores, and then some days where I don't, and I actually, like I have a day off work today, and I'm feeling good. Um, I do have schoolwork to do, and so maybe I'm just putting off my schoolwork, but anyway, I'm going to put some of this cling film, saran wrap, cling wrap, whatever you call it. I'm just going to put it over the top, and I'm just going to put this elastic around it, and pull it tight, and then I like to poke some holes in it just so that it's not... Um, so there's a little bit of humidity in there, able to get through. Now, initially the moss will have enough humidity in there for it, but then I usually open this about once a week and give it another spray just to make sure. But the moss has been soaking in nutrients and everything, and I'm just gonna let that all evaporate. So it doesn't need to be sprayed immediately. Going to poke a couple little holes in there, um, like that, and that way the air is gonna be able to come through. Yeah, they're very small holes, but, Anything really helps to just let that, so that's just so it's not stagnant air. So I'm on a no buy right now, actually. And so that is why I'm not buying any um, plant tags, but that's something that I want to get into. I'm just starting to get enough like nodes and things like that to actually get confused by them. I'm just using sticky notes. And then I'm just gonna put some of my packing tape that I pack my plants with. Um, on the container. I do like this moss brand. I'd like to try the Spag Moss Mint brand that everybody's trying on Amazon. Um, I don't know if I just bought it or not. I think I did, because I have a huge order. Someone ordered um, like 40 moss pools or something like that from me. They ordered, she might be 30, because they ordered 10 of each size. So it's a really big order that I have to do, because I have to make all of those, and they need a better moss. And I know everybody says that the Spag Moss is the best, like the one with the orange um, container and everything. I'm gonna start putting it in the bottom here. So yeah, they said it was really good. This one is just a brand from a nursery that I have. I think it has a picture of an orchid on the front, maybe. Sometimes it has some sticks and some weird things in it, and I just pick those out for propagating plants in. I don't find an issue, but if I want a plant to stay in here long-term, which I'm actually just starting to do, um, Lulu's Leaves introduced me to that. I was going to transplant that Magnificum Verde into um, soil, and she's like, no, no, like grow it in moss and I was like long term and yeah literally you can just as long as it's staying fertilized so that's something that's also really interesting to know and I'm still learning too because it's like a wholesale order this guy's gonna sell them kind of as his so they're not gonna sell them as his but he's going to sell them in his little plant shop so I want them to be like you know with my logo on them and it'll probably help my business as well so this is some um Pro Mix Root Stimulator um, Rooting Hormone. It's like $4, honestly. I got mine at Canadian Tire and I'm going to dip my node in it. I'm going to dip all around except the part at the top. So it's had some time to sit out and callus over. Um, and this is the direction that the leaf came out of, out here. So I'm gonna stick it like that into the moss. I might leave room in case I wanna put some other plants in here. I've been really starting to try to put the date. So it's um, March 31st, the day that I'm filming this. And I'm going to tape it under this cause this is gonna come off all the time. So the date that I did it and what it is. And then this cling wrap can just 
stay down. I think it's super important now that I'm getting more into plants and having more of them, um, especially more nodes. I've been doing a lot more propagating, doing more um, of a lot of things to do with plants. I'm getting, collecting more of them, propagating more, having more nodes. So it's gonna be really important to tell what it is. This one is just getting so big. This is my Philodendron Mame. And I actually, I did get this from Lulu's Leaves from Lucia. Just starting to get shiny. I don't know if you can tell, it's starting to get like a little sheen on it, which is just so cute. I have been thinking of moving it to a different container and I would put it in this, but this is taller. So it seems like it's probably best to keep it in there as long as I can. And then in this one, I have my Philodendron Milano Chrysum. This was from the one that I keep saying that my mom threw out a cutting of. So I was able to save it and it has one, two, three, four, five, six leaves right now. So you can know what to do next. So these guys are okay, but this one needs some water. To the plants that I have on my windowsill here, um, I have a Monstera dubia in here and my very favorite Hoya Matilde here. And then I have my other very favorite, um, my Gigas, my philodendron gigas. It is doing really, really well in the moss there, and I hope we're gonna get a new leaf soon. And then this is my little IKEA greenhouse that I have. So in here I have some jewel orchids, a variegated string of hearts. So this is a little Kit Kat begonia here. Um, the jewel orchid, like I said, Hoya Fichii, um, with a new leaf coming out that looks really sun stressed, which is really nice. I showed you guys this greenhouse the other day when I did my how to make a trellis thing and this is the Hoya Hanhi A pink that is now on this trellis we made. I have a Kronhiana Super Splash there, a Hoya. Um, this is a really, really cool um, African Violet Lee Marilyn that I got from Kim's Nature and it is just really, really cool. I love the curly leaves. Yes, it's supposed to look like that. Um, absolutely love it. And then Ahoya Rotundiflora. So the plants actually look very watered, but the moss or perlite, sorry, at the bottom might not be. So I might just, it's pretty dry. So I'm just gonna pour some water kind of in there with my watering can. I just kind of pour the water over all the plants kind of, not the African violet, but just over the plants and then into the perlite below. And then that just creates a ton, a ton, a ton of moisture in there. And they all just love it. So I just do that. I usually have a bit more water, but honestly I did this like last week, so it should be okay. Um, and I got water on these two and the begonia needed a little, so I watered that one. And then the other ones just got kind of a spray as I poured it. Alrighty guys, so this kind of is going to be a really long video. I think I'm going to cut it here. Um, the only other things I had to do were water some plants on my shelf over there and water the mounted plants there, but it's just getting to be quite a long video and there's only a couple Hoyas over there anyway. Um, and I have to film that root rot video and I also have some schoolwork to do. So I'm going to end it here. That's going to be all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. I hope that that you enjoyed cleaning today. Maybe you did some cleaning with me um, and did some planty care as well. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.